Johnny's natural compassion gave him a certain kinship with the animals. If he heard that an animal was being mistreated or abused, he would purchase it and then pay another settler to take care of it until it regained its health. At that point, the settler could keep the animal or sell it to someone else who would take good care of it. Johnny was especially concerned about abandoned horses. It frequently happened that the long journey into the wilderness would cause the new settlers to be encumbered with lame and broken down horses that were turned loose to die. Whenever Johnny saw this or heard about it, he refused to let the horses be slaughtered, abandoned, or mistreated in any way. Instead, he would make arrangements for their care and shelter with local settlers, paying them for their efforts. When the horses recovered, Johnny gave them to needy families under the condition that the horses would be treated well. As one person recalls, he was never known to hurt any animal or give pain to any living thing. In brief, Johnny was one of those rare individuals who did not believe that the world belonged to him. Rather, he believed that he belonged to the world. And he proved it by his life, immortalized and often exaggerated in the legends that followed him many of which he may have started himself. Chapter 3, The Fruit, What Johnny Did Matthew 7, 16, You shall know them by their fruits. A movable enterprise. Johnny's initial work in western Pennsylvania was just the beginning of a long and memorable career. His labors over the next 45 years would extend beyond Pennsylvania into Ohio and eventually into Indiana, all of which became known as Johnny Appleseed Country. In some accounts, because of the seeds that Johnny gave to settlers traveling west, Appleseed Country extended even into Illinois, Kentucky, and beyond. But in order to appreciate this aspect of the Johnny Appleseed story, we need to start at the beginning in western Pennsylvania where Johnny was planting the first of his many nurseries. One of the earliest recollections on record is given by a man named R.I. Curtis, who wrote in 1859, I knew him in Pennsylvania nearly 60 years ago when I was a child of eight or nine. Curtis reports that Johnny subsisted one whole winter on butternuts. He then reveals important details about how Johnny conducted his apple tree enterprise. According to Curtis, Johnny was already anticipating those places where he believed at a future day apple trees would be wanted. 